Welcome to Dulce America. sound of the Appalachian Mountain dulcimer brings many to its table and many feast heartily upon it. That came out weird. Hello everybody, welcome to Dulce America. My name is Bing Futch. It's a brand new year. We've got brand new episodes for you and today we're going to go taking a look at a tuning that not a lot of people use, which is strange because it is actually a traditional mountain dulcimer tuning. That's DAA, also known as 155 tuning. And we'll get into that very deeply here in just a second. But first, I want to give a shout out to one of my patrons on Patreon, David Dickey. David, thank you so much for being one of my patrons and for being one of the most fun-loving guys I know. I know we have a very similar sensibility when it comes to plugging our dulcimers in and doing crazy stuff with it. So I really appreciate your feedback, your input, and I appreciate your support very, very much. Thanks, David. For those of you who wonder about Patreon, basically, it's a subscription service for my music, my video, tablature, and a whole lot more. Just $5 a month will get you in the door. You get to download everything for free, and everything I create brand new goes to you as well. For more information, check out patreon.com slash bingfutch. Go to the featured tag section, check out the open house area, download to your heart's content, and think about joining with a bunch of other people who have become patrons over the past few years. Become a part of the art, help support this program, and enjoy lots of free stuff. Again, David, thank you very much. And to all my patrons, I love you. So here's where we are at. I'm in DAD tuning right now. And I have taught a number of places where people are not wanting to tune anything. They don't want to get out of DAD or they don't want to get out of DAA. And retuning your dulcimer is something that we have to do because we're a diatonic instrument with only seven note scale that, to work with, basically. So what happens is somebody will call out something strange and we won't have the notes or the chords to play it. But retuning will give us that ability. Or you could go full chromatic, but we won't go there just yet. So it's very, very easy to do this, and you'll discover a wealth of really cool stuff once you start getting into retuning your mountain dulcimer. So for DAD to DAA, all you have to do is change one string. That's going to be the melody string, which is at D right now. We want to change that string. We want to take it and pitch down, not up. If you go up trying to tune to A, this string is going to break for sure. But you want to pitch it down to A. In fact, you want to match the A that is the middle string. So one way you can do this, especially if you don't have a tuner, is to grab the tuning gear for your melody string and start turning it so that the pitch starts to go down. And you want to be able to hear this pitch. And strum these two strings, melody and middle, at the same time until the melody matches the middle, just like this. tuning. It's as simple as that. If you have a tuner, that's of course easier, but this goes very, very quickly. And I'll give you a little hint about something here. Listen to these two strings right now. So that's pretty steady. Now I want to move the melody string out of tune just a little bit. Listen very carefully to the sound of the two A's. It'll go from steady to a sort of a, you'll hear a beat you'll hear a vibration. Listen to it. Hear that wah 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 going on there? That's letting you know that these two notes are no longer at, these two strings are no longer at the same pitch. They're no longer at the same frequency. And their waveforms, which were absolutely identical, are now slightly different. And that sound you're hearing is a result of this difference. So I'll make it even worse now. Check this out. Now you can clearly tell the strings are not in tune. And that beat 
that you hear is moving faster. Now listen as I take the string back up to pitch and listen to that beat as it slows down and finally goes away when both strings are in tune. That's a cool little uh, thing to listen for if you're tuning without a tuner. Okay, so now we're in DAA tuning. The scale for DAA is going to begin at the 3rd fret, and it's going to go all the way through the 10th fret. Playing with the open drone, D major scale will go like this. So there's your scale right there, and I'm going to show you three very easy chords. These are going to be D, G, and A, also the 1, 4, and 5 chords. For any key you play in, if you know these three chords, you can play thousands of songs. So we'll start off with D major. I'm going to call the numbers from bass string to the me uh, melody string. This is going to be 203. 203. That's D major. Then we're going to slide this down to 102. And there you have A major. And now a different shape, the T shape, 313. That's G major. Watch how easy it is to go from G major to D major. We're going to pick up off of the middle string, the middle finger there, or the ring finger, and then we're going to drop the index finger down one fret, keep the thumb where it is. Going back to G. Going back to D. Slide it down to A. Back up to D. Going to G. To D. Then to A. And let's go to G. And in one D. So a couple of those chords, you're only using the thumb and the forefinger. It's really, really easy stuff. And in fact, I think that the chord shapes in DAA are actually easier than the ones that are in DAD. Once you get used to them, it's really a lot easier to move those chords around. Plus, I love the voicings of this particular tuning. They're nice, tight voicings, so when you play these chords, there is no guessing whether it's a major chord or a minor chord. It's very evident what you've got going on here. So it's really, really cool to, uh, to play in this tuning because it's uh, a lot easier on your hands. So let me show you the other two major chord shapes that we'll be using. The T-shaped chord we've already covered. That's a closed chord, meaning every single string is being pressed down. There are no open strings, and so you can move this shape all around the fretboard. So if you're new to DAA, I'm going to show you a quick way here to know what chord you're playing, as long as you know what the scale is. And if you're used to the fretboard in DAD, know that your bass string and your middle string have not changed at all. So you can still use those um, and remember those notes the same way you were when you were in DAD tuning. So the first thing here with the T-shaped chord is that the root of the chord is going to be on the bass string. So when we play 3-1-3, three, three, the 3 on the bass string is G. So this is a G major chord. When we move it and play a 5-3-5 five, five chord, 
you can listen to that chord and tell that it's a minor chord because it's kind of sad and serious and it's not happy and up like the major chords. So we know it's a minor chord. And we also know that on the bass string, there's a B being played. And so there we have a B minor chord. Next chord is called the triangle chord. And it's kind of shaped like a triangle if you were to connect those three points there. It'd be a little lopsided of a triangle, but nonetheless, it's a triangle. And the uh, root for this chord is on the middle string. So with this particular chord, right there at the third fret, middle string, we have D. So sounding like a happy chord, there we have D major. This is a closed chord as well, so we can move this shape all over the fretboard. And what we've got here is, uh, let me go down here for a second. See, that's a minor chord right there. And on that middle string, we're playing a B. So this is a B minor. Compare that to our T-shaped B minor. Same notes, different voicing. Some pitches are at a different location than others between those two chords, but they still register as B minor. Then we have the extended slant and the, ex sorry, the extended triangle. Much like the slant and the extended slant, we have one shape and then we're gonna alter that shape to get the extension. In this case, instead of just moving one string, we're gonna move two strings. It's gonna be the bass and the melody string to get our extended slant. So, we're playing G on the melody string. This is a G major chord since it's up and happy. And once again, this is a closed chord, so we can move this chord around. In fact, right there, it's a little indistinct, but that is a minor chord. I'm playing F sharp on the melody string. So this is an F sharp minor. So to review, we have our T-shaped chord. Root is on the bass. Triangle chord. Root's on the middle string. Extended triangle roots on the melody string. Those are your basic shapes. You can still bar here. And then you have these little partial chords here. They're actually, they're full chords, but they only require two fingers, D and A. And our open strum. DAA is sometimes called 155 tuning, and those numbers refer to the scale degrees. So if we're in DAA, D is the one, the first note of the scale, D major scale, and five is A twice, and that's the fifth note of the D major scale. If we were playing in the traditional key of C for the mountain dulcimer, 155 would render us C on the bass string, and then G on the middle string and on the melody string. CGG is a traditional tuning for mountain dulcimers, and this, was been, this has been used for a very long time. I'm not sure why we are in D now, and I think C sounds lovely, and I don't care who you are. Singing in D is kind of tough, isn't it? So singing in C, if you want to go that direction, your dulcimer sounds magnificent when tuned to CGG. It's really, really awesome. So I'm going to play a couple of things here. One, I'm going to play a little Cripple Creek. This is one of the first things I learned on the Mountain Dulcimer back in 1986, and it goes something like this. Carnahan taught me that one. That's a cool little tune. Um, so, you know, sounds great with fiddle tunes. And it also sounds great when you have got a nice, lush arrangement. And uh, let me see if I remember this one here. A little, little sweet hour of prayer for you.
So my melody string is a little sour, and the reason for that is when you tune it up, if you're used to having certain strings on your mountain dulcimer, and builders will sometimes specify these are what strings you should use, when you take that string and tune it differently, it might go outside of the parameters of that um, specification set by the builder or by the manufacturers of the string itself. So what happens is I've taken a very high strung, and I do mean high strung, string, our melody string, when it's in D, it's wound tight like a tennis racket, you know? And so I've taken it down to A, and it is a little loose and floppy, which means it's very, very easy for me to make it go sharp if I use the same touch. And that's happening just a little bit there. If you want to experiment with some of these tunings that require you to drop those strings, it's advisable to get a stronger or a higher gauge string on there, a thicker gauge string in there. So instead of a 0 .013, I would probably do a 0 .015 or 0 .016. So if you are experimenting with tuning and it doesn't sound good, it's not you, it's not the dulcimer, it might just be the fact that you need to put a different set of strings on there to take up that slack, and that's all there is to it. Now, I know it's never any fun changing strings because you never know when one of those little suckers is going to break off and pop you in the eye. So, my advice to you is, one, wear protective eyewear, and two, just kind of get used to it, make the tuning face, shield your face, whatever you have to do. But there's a lot of wonderful worlds of discovery to be found on the mountain dulcimer once you get outside of that same old tuning that you're always playing. And I hope that you'll take this opportunity to retune a little bit and explore 155, either in CGG, uh, DAA, EBB. There's a lot of stuff you can do. So give it a shot, and hopefully you'll have a lot of fun with it. I'll be back with more very, very soon from the world of Dulcimerica, and I'd like to extend this invitation to all of you out there who are watching. I have revitalized the intro to the show, and I have included some very, very special cameos from people all around the world who want to share a little bit of greeting with you, and I'd like you to be one of those people. So if you could, send me a short video of you holding your mountain dulcimer and simply say, welcome to Dulcimerica. Make sure you send your name and your city and state, and I'll put you right there at the intro to our show. Now, I'll be doing at least 52 weeks of shows. That means there's about 52 slots available. I'll be doing this for the foreseeable future, but get yours in soon, and then you'll be able to see it right here on the front end of Dulce America. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll be back with more, and until then, as I always say, play on, baby. Play on. This is Bing Futch. <laughs>